welcome to Encore. I'm Rochelle Harrison Pless. Thanks for joining us. Coming up, we take you on a musical journey around the globe. Chart topping French Congolese rapper Maître Gims wows crowds in Conakry. The Section d'Assault frontman soaking up massive solo success with a world tour in full swing. She's been dubbed rap's next big thing. Afro Puerto Rican MC Princess Nokia tells us why her music pays tribute to her Boricua roots and Yoruba spiritual traditions. And a dose of girl power in Afghanistan with Zora, the country's first and only all-female orchestra, defying a Taliban crackdown as the first women to perform music in over three decades. But first, this French Congolese rapper had us burning up dance floors with the smash hit Sapé Comme Jamais. Maître Gims is riding a wave of solo success while taking a break from frontman duties in the rap group Section d'Assaut. He recently performed at a jam-packed stadium in Conakry, the Guinean capital, the latest stop on his world tour. Our correspondents were there and sent us this report. Certified gold. His latest single sold more than 10 million copies. And his second studio album, My Heart Was Right, was named one of the top albums in France last year. Now French Congolese rapper Maître Gimze has achieved another career milestone, a major solo tour in Africa. Last week he arrived in Conakry to a hero's welcome. Around 100 fans waited late into the night to greet him. On his second day, Maître Gims paid a visit to an orphanage north of the capital. The artist surprised children at the Rosina Maris Child Rehabilitation Center. Every time I come to Africa, I like to see children, because I also have children that are your age. I have children that are the same age as the little one here, two years old, and I have a daughter who's eight years old. Well, here I am, and I'm very glad to see you, to see you smile. I brought a lot of gifts. Maître Gims promised one of the greatest concerts Guinea had ever seen. I love Maître Gims. I really wanted to take a picture with him, but it's a shame as he's too busy. But it doesn't matter because the concert is awesome. I'm here at Metro Games live concert and he's the boss. He came to party here in our country and I'm so very happy and very touched too. Around 80,000 people pack the stands for his debut in the Ghanaian capital. <laughs> Right, let's cross the Atlantic now to New York, where Afro-Puerto Rican rapper Princess Nokia has gone from dealing drugs to being dubbed the future queen of feminist rap, drawing comparisons with M.I.A. and Santa Gold. The up-and-coming MC's EP 1992 as a swaggering ode to Spanish Harlem, where she grew up, and her Boricua roots. Well, France 24 spoke to Princess Nokia while she was touring in Paris last weekend. She told Alnina Masson why her ancestry and artistry will always be intertwined. For me, growing up in a super Afrocentric and indigenous home, um, it's kind of like always what I've known, like just like being like a really like woke kind of like kid, and um, it's like so natural, like it's just like so nor like that that whole kind of schism of like cultural preservation. It's not something I had to learn later on, like accepting my culture. It was something that was like always so prideful in my in my sense of self. So it was not something that I discovered later on in life and just was like, oh, I'm gonna put this in my art. It's something that I like secondhandedly think, see, breathe, and feel in. And I come from an island, and it's one Puerto Rico, and it's one of the smallest, but it got the most people. 
reaching my altar. I'm reaching my altar. I'm reaching my altar. Got coins in the counter. I'm reaching my altar. I'm reaching my altar. I'm reaching my altar. Next, they're breaking ground as the first and only all-female orchestra in Afghanistan. Together, they're known as Zora, an award-winning ensemble of students from the National Institute of Music. While well, they're also the first women to learn and perform music in over three decades in a country torn apart by war and the extremist policies of the Taliban. As Pascal Davies explains, the Afghan Women's Orchestra recently gave their first international performance in Davos, Switzerland. Taking centre stage and captivating the attention of world leaders with their traditional instruments, these 30 young Afghan women play in the face of death threats and accusations they're dishonouring their families by daring to perform. They're drafting a new destiny for themselves through music. Today, Najina is leading the group. Without my father and my mother, like my other family member, they're also like this. They didn't let me to come in the music school. My uncles make a lot of problems for me. Like my grandmother said to my father that if you let me begin to go to music school, so after that you are not my son anymore. The head of the nation's music institute was injured in the deadly Taliban attack in 2014. He now wants to be at the forefront of change in his country. Afghanistan is closely associated outside Afghanistan with Kalashnikov, Bukhra, uh, violence against women, suicide bombing. But it's not all, uh, all about Afghanistan. And it's not every Afghan is not a member of the Taliban movement or every member of the Afghan society is uh, not violating the human rights of the women of Afghanistan. This exclusively female ensemble plays traditional Afghan as well as Western classical music. Violinist Zarifa Adiba dreams of receiving a scholarship to study at an American university. I'm so happy that the generation, my generation, they are trying to get education, they are trying to do something better for our country. So that's why I think um, we are going to change, but it's hard. It will take a generation to change. The orchestra attends the National Institute of Music. Receiving a musical education is a rare opportunity in Afghanistan, a country in which nearly 80% of women have never been to school. Now, boasting dulcet tones and heartthrob looks, it's no wonder Omar Kamal has earned the nickname the Palestinian Frank Sinatra. The singer and musician is turning heads for his immaculate covers of jazz standards. Kamal is hoping to follow in the footsteps of the iconic crooner with a new album titled Serenade. Iris Makler and Cyril Payen report. Kamal's been in love with the old songs and the old jazz crooners since he was a teenager. If it takes forever, I will wait for you. And yes, it's old blue eyes, Frank Sinatra himself, who most inspired Omar when he was listening to music and dreaming at his home in the West Bank town of Nablus. Sinatra has got this really um, profound ability to, to deliver and to um, and kind of tell a story to uh, to the audience and and and, and get everyone uh, in the audience kind of you know in the same uh, feeling. Yeah, Ramallah is, is pretty nice. It's, it's chilled out, and uh, and it's you know it's the closest thing to a to an international zone. <laughs> Omar studied in the UK to be an engineer like his dad, but over there he was also the lead vocalist in a jazz band. Doing all of these uh, things in, in music, I, I gained that confidence to come back here and. and maybe for my own band and put together a show. And, and after that, eventually, uh, Sony Music Middle East uh, in Dubai got in touch and, uh, and, and then the conversation uh, started from there. It's like a fairy tale. 
yeah, almost like a fairy tale. Fly me to the moon and let me play up there For with his those debut stars. album, Sony's brought international music legends on board to produce and mix it. They shot in Rome and recorded in Hollywood. They clearly believe Omar Kamal has star quality. I love you. What a stunning voice. And we wrap up Down Under with The Mob, a collective of young Indigenous Australian talent. The students from a remote Aboriginal community have already wowed critics with their first single, Touch the Stars. They're back with Courage and Excellence, a song about breaking stereotypes and defying expectations. The project came about after one prominent newspaper said the school was one of the worst in the country for antisocial behaviour and disadvantage. We'll leave you with a clip of that song for more arts and culture news head to our website and connect with us on social media. Stay with us here on France 24. Lots more after this.